My name is Curtis Steiner and I own a gallery in Seattle called Souvenir and I'm also an artist. I work in many medium, but mostly sculpting, mostly space. I did a piece at the Seattle Art Museum. Some people thought of it as a giant Joseph Cornell. And it was an assemblage of my personal objects. I used uh, objects, like, one, like a poet might use words, and I associated them so that it created a kind of poetry. I have another sculpture at the Seattle Art Museum right now called 1,000 Blocks, and it's an interactive sculpture. It invites the viewer to come and manipulate the sculpture and create new patterns. It's one of the few things in the Seattle Art Museum, one of the few pieces of art that people are actually encouraged to touch. I did this project for Franz Chocolate. I did a portrait of Franz's granddaughter with over 4,000 individual chocolates. It was just such a great and strange project and I would have never had a reason to, to do a, a chocolate mosaic and I really enjoyed it. I, I no longer eat chocolate, but I, <laughs> I, I could see the beauty in it. <laughs> I did a large sculpture for Davis Wright Tremaine and I used plexiglass, bugle beads, and sequins, something that's just bound to be a disaster. Like there's nothing that could be tackier than, than that, those materials put together. It quakes. It's sort of like the back of a sparklets truck. One of the challenges that I really love is to take that sort of material that could be potentially tacky and making something that's sublime and beautiful. I really try not to limit myself. I, I'm, I'm an omnivore aesthetically. I was always really creative, really um, passionate artist, always. It was always assumed my whole family thought I would be an artist when I grew up. I was probably, as a 15-year-old in Mali Terrace, quite flamboyant. And it was the late 70s, where it's not really a good thing to be. So I, I got out of there as quickly as possible. There was a real lack of beauty, certainly in the suburbs where I was living. So that's what drove me to, to search for it and to search for uh, something richer, a richer beauty, a richer environment, a richer aesthetic world. When I started the shop, it really was meant to be a space for my handmade greeting card company. The Handmade Greeting Card Company exploited paintings that I had done, many, many, many paintings, hundreds of paintings, and it, it, it evolved. I started making jewelry using antique materials and gems, diamonds, gold, all sorts of other things. They call it Souvenir a decorative arts gallery, so what we sell is small antique objects that are decorative, usually um, somewhat ornate or somehow mysterious crafted things. We don't sell anything that's mass produced. Nothing's made by slaves. It's all made by artists and or antique. I value them purely on an aesthetic level. A lot of antique dealers buy things because they're a known commodity. So they might buy a vase because it was made by Tiffany, but it could be the ugliest vase the, on earth and they will sell it at a, at a profit. And, and that's good business. That's a, a very smart business plan. But to me, it would ruin the whole experience because I want somebody to come into the, to the gallery and be able to rest their eyes on anything and everything and, and find it generally beautiful. If you ask people to focus on the details, you to open their eyes, you have to give them some fodder, give them something to amuse their eye. It's not about a big, fast expression, it's about tiny, tiny details. <laughs>